Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the April 11th, 2024 meeting of the Penfield Planning Board. We'll begin the meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, thanks everyone for coming. Lori, would you please call the roll? Hetsky. Hetsky here. Aiken. Aiken here. Knauer. Knauer here. Sangster. Sangster here. Weissar. Weissar here. O'Connor. O'Connor here. Prinzing. Prinzing here. Gray here. Okay. Uh, for those of you who are not here at all our meetings, uh, the way we operate on a public hearing evening is from 6 30 to 7 we go through our tabled applications in a work session and then uh, 7 o'clock we start the public hearing portion if we complete all our tabled applications and all our work session items we will move immediately into the public hearing portion um, and uh, if the work session takes longer than seven o'clock, we stop that and go into the public hearing. So uh, with that, we also have minutes from the March 14th meeting. Hopefully everyone's had an opportunity to review them and can we entertain a motion to approve? Motion to approve. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. All right, Doug, would you like to go through our tabled items? All right. <clears throat> tabled application number one was 1676 uh, Penfield Road, the Flower City Arcade. Uh, we received a request from the applicant to withdraw the application. Um, so we've honored that, and it will not be on any further agendas. Okay. Um, tabled application number two, 2324 Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. Uh, so at the last meeting, uh, I think the biggest conversation point for the board was requesting that the fire marshal provide feedback on um, his comfort with the double stacked parking and uh, access to the property. The fire marshal did provide one comment. It was included in our uh, PRC memo that was sent to the applicant today. Um, his comment was minimal. We'd just like to see potentially the drive aisle widened a little bit, make it easier if uh, an emergency vehicle ever had to pull into the, the driveway. But that was his only concern. Okay, but otherwise, no. No, no major, no major concerns. concerns. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Uh, you can submit that. Um, feel free. But we received We're, a VA email uh, earlier this afternoon. Okay. Great. We also have an approval resolution. Correct. Um, ready to go. Does anybody have any uh, additional concerns or issues with this application? No. Nope. Okay. Has, has that been prepared? Is it complete? The, yes. Okay. Okay. Yep. So I will move to approve the um, EAF. EAF. The EAF. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. All right. And we have a resolution. Yeah, I'll move to um, approve the resolution. I'll second. Hetsky. Hetsky, aye. Aiken. Aiken, aye. Knauer. Knauer, aye. Okay. Good luck. <laughs> Thank you. I guess the fire marshal plans on driving the ladder truck into the driveway <laughs> to help the operators. So that discussion about <clears throat> not leaving 250 is moved. Yep. That's fine. <laughs> I'm just... All right. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Um, any other items? Work session uh, wise. Well, that was all the work session items I had for you. Okay, so as I said about four minutes ago, <laughs> uh, if we get done with our work session, we'll move immediately into the public hearing portion of the evening. 
and which we'll do now. If uh, the applicant would like to come up to one of those two tables and set up shop, so to speak, um, that would be great. The way our process works, for those of you, again, who uh, aren't in um, attendance at these meetings on a regular basis, the applicant will present their project to the board, the board will ask questions, and then we'll turn it over for audience participation to get uh, public input and feedback. And uh, if you are not present and one of the millions watching around the world on our streaming services and live on the web, uh, you can call in at 585-340-8771 or submit a comment electronically online at www.penfield.org. And there should be a link to this meeting on the home page. Okay, Doug. All right. Move on. Application number one, Cost Ditch Engineering, 217 Lake Avenue, Rochester, New York, 14608. On behalf of HB Cornerstone, requests under Chapter 250, Article 12-12.2 and Article 13-13.2 of the Code of the Town of Penfield for preliminary and final site plan approval and a conditional use permit for proposed 14,000 square foot uh, building addition for an early learning center with associated parking lot expansion and other site improvements on 50.83 acres at 1835 and 1835B, Fairport Nine Mile Point Road. The properties are now or formerly owned by YMCA of Greater Rochester and Zone Mixed Use Development, MUD, application number 24P-0006, SBLs 125.01-1-34.12 and 34.13. Okay. Good evening. Uh, Matt from Matt Evans from Cornerstone. Uh, we're back here again tonight. I'll just do some quick introductions uh, and then we'll get started. Um, with us tonight from the project team, we have Alex Amory from Cost Engineering, myself and Rod Buffington from Cornerstone as the owner's representatives, and Mike Stevens from the YMCA, who is the COO and project lead from the YMCA. Uh, Mike, I'll turn it over to you. Sure. Thanks so much. Good evening, uh, my name is Mike Stevens. I serve as the Chief Operating Officer of the YMCA of Greater Rochester. I want to start off by thanking this group for their service to the community. We're in front of you this evening as the Y once again reimagines its service to the community to improve quality of life for all in the Penfield service area. In 2005, the Y created what is known today as the Eastside Family YMCA. <coughs> in just nine short years, we had already outgrown our 66,000 square foot footprint. It was then we came before this group seeking approval to expand the facility to add more spaces and places for children, adults, seniors, and families. This expansion also marked the first time medical offices were embedded within a YMCA in Monroe County. Tonight, we are seeking preliminary and final site plan approval along with a conditional use permit to respond to the growing need for licensed childcare in the Penfield service area. Penfield is identified as a childcare desert. A child care desert is an area where three times as many children exist as there are spots for licensed care. The YMCA currently operates a licensed, sold out child care facility just a few miles up the road from the Eastside Family YMCA. That facility is navigating bankruptcy proceedings, putting the future possibility of care in jeopardy for 76 children and families. The Y has been hard at work with members of our project team who are here this evening, including Cornerstone, Costage Engineering, um, and also including our president and CEO, Ernest Lamore, uh, who is here with us as well. Um, I will turn it over to Alex Amering from Costage to lead you through tonight's presentation, and we'll be back at the end with a few closing thoughts and happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Mike. Uh, first off, um, little history on the project. It was first presented at a PRC meeting in November of 2023. Uh, we were before this board in February for a sketch plan review. Uh, the plan in front of you is primarily the same plan with a few tweaks. Um, obviously, being before you for a full site plan submission, there's a lot of additional details that are now um, have been submitted as part of that. Uh, 
full design development obviously took the layout that was presented to you, incorporated demolition, a full site plan, grading, erosion control, utilities, landscape, and lighting. Um, in addition to that, the architecture has also been developed by the Cornerstone team. Um, before we had some black and white elevations, <coughs> now they've worked through material and color selections. Um, we've also submitted quite a bit of supplemental engineering information, uh, notably stormwater design, uh, a traffic impact study which was requested, um, which I'll note typically based on this user wouldn't be required, but we understand there's some sensitivity due to the amount of development and I think the town's also working with a consultant on a larger study in the area. So we submitted that. Um, at the last meeting we spent a bunch of time going through the town staff comments from sketch plan, the Monroe County uh, referral. Um, and also we received, I think at the March, one of the March meetings, the board approved your sketch plan comments. Um, all of that was responded to as part of our application also. Um, we did just, I think a few hours ago, receive some updated town staff comments, uh, went through those. There are a lot of engineering details and uh, nothing major that jumped out at me and we will obviously be addressing those going forward. Um, <coughs> happy to go through any of those any of those comments in more detail, but I figured get through the presentation and then open it up to the board. Um, one item I would note uh, the YMCA has been working on a CM selection process as part of that. Uh, they were looking at logistics from a construction standpoint and we have started looking at a temporary construction road which will show up on future drawings but the YMCA owns the residential parcel you'll see up on 250 there. Um, we'd like to bring a temporary construction road in through there there's a number of reasons for that. Obviously, the, the Y itself and the medical partner space will remain open throughout construction, so there's a lot of um, interest in safety and how vehicles access the site. So I just want to point that out because that currently isn't represented on the drawings. Again, it would be temporary. It would be gone upon completion of the project. So. Uh, I think that covers my rather technical <coughs> section and if you have any finishing thoughts or open it up? Sure, J just a couple of thoughts that I wanted to speak to. Uh, first, to, to leave you with that youth development continues to be a pillar of the why um, in our mission and it's a priority for us within our new strategic plan. Licensed Child Care is the only program that operated uninterrupted during COVID for both children zero to six years of age with which this facility would serve, but also for school age children um, as well. Uh, currently, as I sit here tonight, we serve 76 children off site. Um, this 14,000 square foot build would allow us to serve 120 children. Uh, between the ages of zero to six years of age. Um, based on the numbers of our waiting list today, we would anticipate the center opening at full capacity September 1, uh, 2025. And then finally, in the last five years, the Y has built two licensed child care facilities, one in Ontario County and one in Monroe County, both attached to a YMCA, and we are convinced this is the best way to serve the entire family unit in all ages and stages of life. Happy to answer any any questions. Okay. Um, do you uh, maybe want to go through the architecturals real sure. quick? Sure, we can do that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so as we talked about last time, you'll see um, Alex brought up that we did submit 
um, this time uh, a little bit. The, the floor plan slightly changed, probably not much, um, moving some things around, but the square footage is pretty much the same and it's the same use. So really the added uh, information is the elevations. Uh, as we talked about in the February meeting, uh, matching the existing uh, materials on the existing building, the same aesthetics. Uh, so we've obviously graphically depicted uh, that best we could and obviously it looks different on this piece of paper than it does on the screen. However, it would be a brick to match the existing facility, so it will be a masonry veneer, um, glazing, uh, the uh, storefront glazing system will be an aluminum system, exactly like what's on the uh, the Y now and you know the entire building and facility. Uh, so it, it's really more of the same. Um, we didn't bring any samples with us, didn't know that that would be necessary based on the fact that you've got a full scale sample there, but happy to answer any other questions you have on that. Okay. There was some discussion about, uh, isn't that area the loading dock? Yeah, and so... Um, wasn't there a discussion about how that was going to be managed and... Sh Sure. Yeah, and it's in one of the things. Even I made the mistake early on, or or assumed, over assumed that it was a, a full loading dock. Really, it's a receiving area, right? The biggest thing that's happening back there from big truck movements is the dumpsters and the dumpster enclosure. And Alex can talk more about that in radiuses if if there's some concerns or questions there. We did, as you can see on that site plan, if you if you look um, to the the upper right hand corner of the expansion so you're putting in a there's new those double doors that are recessed back in there those will remain those are just um, six foot you know six foot wide uh, seven foot high doors where they take you know receive things in through the back so not really a loading dock it's just a receiving area okay and the the dumpster enclosure there on the site plan is new proposed. That's, That's correct. I, I think what will that? Uh, uh, that would, same materials. Yeah, as that would building? be a masonry enclosure with you know um, gates of some sort. I'm trying to remember. I think we may have. Um, if you go back to that other drawing, there was the existing might have that on there. Alex, you're the one tonight. Yeah. If you go to the, the previous slide, you'll see where the dumpster is today. And I'm right there. Yeah, yeah right. it's it's heavily treed right now, but I do believe it's masonry three sides and a gate on the front. So we would be we would be doing the same thing. Those trees that are in between on the east side of the uh, existing drive that I see in the photo will are those the trees that would be screening the new one, or would you be no, taking those down and there'd be new trees or? There's new ones going in. We looked at options, but where the dumpster is being proposed, there, there's a lot going on there that doesn't really meet the eye utility-wise. There's a, a pump station. There's also gas, water. Uh, where Matt referred to the receiving area, that corner of the building is also the mechanical area that right. serves the whole building. So, mm -hmm. um, so everything comes in there. Yeah, losing a couple trees and proposing a few new ones um, to Is make it work was what we decided. Right. Okay. Um, Mike, you had you had mentioned there's a couple other facilities that have daycare. How many children do they have in those? Each has uh, 76 children. So this would be the bigger one. Yes. Um, you mentioned that Penfield is a child care desert. That's correct. Uh, is there a reason why you didn't propose a bigger <laughs> facility? Sure. Um, certainly, as we think about our footprint and our ability to serve and our ability to treat children as individuals and not numbers, there, there becomes a point where moving to too large a, a site, it's just not simply simply able to be realized. We continue to explore different options all over Monroe County uh, to show up and serve in, in new and meaningful ways, whether that's partnering with school districts and being inside schools to run UPK uh, programs or a traditional model like this that would bolt on uh, to a facility at various locations where we have the bandwidth to be able to support uh, an addition such as this. Okay. Um, 
lighting wise, you're adding parking, any new poles Correct. out there. <laughs> um, looks like you have uh, at least one new pole and three new heads. Would that be right? Southwest corner. Uh, there's and then poles along the new the drive or yeah. those existing. The main the main parking field will have some new ones. Yep. Okay. Um, that's all I have for the moment. Other members of the board, Bob. Yeah, I had a f few questions. In previous meetings, could you remind me of the hours of operation, hours and days of the week? For the child care center or yes. for the YMCA? For the child care specifically. Uh, we traditionally operate child care services from 7 a.m. Uh, to 6 p.m., uh, but a majority of our children are picked up usually by 5 p.m. Okay. Is that Monday through Friday? or It is. Okay. Um, the lighting that's proposed for the building itself outside of any um, lighting in the parking lot, will it be like wall units, that sort of thing on the building? Yeah, there, there's actually um, architectural light fixtures that are on the existing facility, and the goal would be is if, if those are needed in areas that we would match those. Okay. And for for the playgrounds, is there any outside storage of any kind that's required for those areas? No, the only requirement for the playgrounds is we need to divide uh, and ensure that the playgrounds are age appropriate based on stages of youth development. Okay. So we'll have the two and three year olds on one section of a playground, and then you would have what you would consider, I guess, the traditional playground structure that would be on the other half for four, okay. five, and sometimes six year olds. And it looks like they're, they're freestanding fenced areas that there's a corridor between the playground fencing and the building? Is that correct. Okay. That's correct. Yep. Okay, thank you. Welcome. I just have a question about the, the temporary road that you were speaking of. Can you explain to me what it what it looks like, where is it going from? I was trying to p figure it out in my head. And I point at us. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So it would essentially extend off this corner. This is, um, maybe Mike can tell you what's the residential building service. Uh, it, it hosts our before and after school program okay. as well. So we. I think it was the construction office when the Y was built. That's too. correct. <laughs> yep. So they actually yeah. have a curb cut here today, you know, so the thought would be that the driveway would connect back here. Oh, okay. So when I just was thinking of the the fields that are already back there where they do youth sports, soccer, and whatnot, and was just curious about what that would look like because if, if you're you're going to be playing through their season pretty much, if they're, if they're are you going to postpone activities on that field when this construction is going on? or We'll probably adjust for traditional youth sports Saturday programs that would enjoy a field. We're blessed to be on 50 acres. So some of those things can pivot out to the back okay. of the building and live within the, uh, the existing uh, east side day camp. Okay. Yeah, and the, the construction managers actually brought that up, and we had talked about it before, but they were actually, all, two of the construction managers brought that up, and it's a huge safety concern um, for the construction site, for the, you know, an operational YMCA, and the in the uh, summer camps in the back. So it's a, it was like an aha moment where it's going to just make it a lot safer, and it's a great idea to do it for the, for the project. Yeah. We would envision this area that's being disturbed um, almost if you were to go to Disney and you have those fences that are up with the green mesh that go around and really encapsulate everything that's that's going on. Um, that's really the goal here because we do want to continue to serve uninterrupted mm -hmm. during 
what will amount to probably a, a 12 to 13 month construction period. Okay. Thank you. The only other thing I have, and it's not necessarily related to this uh, particular application, um, back when the original uh, project was approved, uh, there was a lot of attention paid to the architecture and uh, the lighting in the parking lot kind of complementing the architecture and the fixtures, you know, luminaires that were chosen were, um, I'm going to say like a higher end fixture that really complemented the overall uh, architecture of the Y. Yeah. And they, you know, I've noticed recently they've been changed out to basic, you know, industrial style new LED shoe boxes that um, don't have any architectural appeal at all. Um, and that was a pretty major part of the original um, application. But I don't know if uh, there's other facilities that have not upgraded that could be swapped out. And I get the fact that it's a, a big expense, but it's just something that, um, you know, spending the time on um, these projects and all of a sudden they're, you know, to me it was made less nice. So um, at this point I'd like to open it up to anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this application. And uh, once again, I will uh, mention to those who are not here, um, you can call in at 585-340-8771 or submit electronically at penfield.org. Does anybody in the audience here want to speak to the application? I'm not really in the audience, but I, I do have a question. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> so as I look at the, um, the, the, the new uh, drive aisle for the, the drop off, can you talk about how the traffic flow will go? Is that a, because of the way the parking spots are, it looks like you want people to come all the way over and then kind of come through one way. So I just sure. to clarify that. Yeah, so there's a, there's kind of a main drive aisle that comes off of the road from the signal. Um, which I think is that center one of the three, um, you know, that runs north and south there. Um, so anytime we're dealing with a pickup drop-off uh, facility, you want to create kind of a learned or trained movement, you know, for people. Um, and we looked at doing a two-way drive <laughs> aisle, and it really a lot of times does just lead to some level of chaos. Um, so here they would come down that center drive aisle, turn left, and essentially do a counterclockwise rotation up and then back out. Um, we did sheet the drive aisle wider than a traditional one way, just knowing that there might be some interest from emergency services, uh, that type of thing. And then we show what we also call a few uh, short-term parking locations. There's four of them right there. Um, I guess, for example, if someone, a child forgot a toy or something like that. But traditionally, the parents are required to come inside, correct? Mike? Yeah, that's correct. And we become part of a family's everyday movements. And so many of our children are still in car carriers. So the four spots Alex is referring to that are in that radius um, it, typically a family who has a child, right, they'll bring the entire car carrier inside with them. That's where the little one may, may spend the first few hours until they, until they wake up. Then they may transition to a crib. They may transition to crawling. They may transition to, uh, to a feeding time. So that ha happens all throughout that drop-off time from that 7 a.m. that I was describing earlier up until, uh, up until 9. 
So one of the things also, you know, the existing facility, I believe the parking that we're kind of replacing with the building was primarily staff parking. So that's why you see kind of the parking expansion off to the lower left there also. Um, obviously, they want to keep the parking up by the building for, you know, patrons and parents for pickup, drop off, and, you know, primarily staff would be parking in the less, you know, desirable parking spots, so. Okay. Any other questions from the board? Nope. Is there going to be signage on that one section that you can't, it's literally just the one way, is it going to be one way signage? And yes. Stuff? Okay. Okay. Well, we have no calls <laughs> and we have no electronic comments and no one in the audience has uh, raised their hand to speak. So. Uh, Thank you very much for it's a very nice presentation. Thank you. Um, thanks for coming in. And uh, we will get this under consideration and um, issue a tabling motion tonight. Um, but uh, I'm sure there will be some back and forth, um, whatever information that. Uh, we're looking for and staff is looking for, but I think most of it's uh, pretty well in hand. Great. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you very and much. And we will call us here and closed. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay. How's engineering feeling about this? Uh, we don't really have any major concerns. I think uh, looking at the plans uh, this week, they're really just technical in nature, and I think it can be handled as, you know, with the applicant and no major issues. Okay. Doug, any on that? Um, so we did include in our PRC the, the potential that there may be some items that require waivers from the planning board. Yep. We have an expanded waiver authority under the revised MUD code. Um, they were all really minor in nature. When is bicycle storage is required? There's already bicycle storage at the YMCA facility. Not expecting a lot of commuters via bicycle bringing their kids to daycare. So I think it's one that the board could probably waive pretty easily. Uh, another one was sidewalks along parking are seven feet, required to be eight feet under the MUD. Again, that's one that the planning board has the authority to uh, waive if you're comfortable with the sidewalk width and um, the general sidewalk layout that's provided. So we don't have any substantial issues or any major concerns. I think those were the, the biggest planning concerns. Okay, any other, any major issues on your end? <clears throat> no, other than, if there are fixtures on the building, do we want to yeah. see um, cut sheets on those? I would, yes. Okay. I would like to see those. Yeah, for sure. Um. Uh, speaking of the architecture, is this something you guys want to forward on to our architectural consultant for the review? Or are you comfortable with uh, the design of the, the building mimicking or, or mirroring very similarly the existing YMCA facility? So, argument for that would be uh, we get a professional opinion on how well it matches. And it is a pretty prominent structure in town. Um, I would say that's probably not a bad idea. Okay. So why don't we do that and start drafting the approval resolution so that uh, once we have Chris's comments back and... Well, on the similar vein, do you want to send it to our landscape consultant yeah, Bruce for... and... Yes. Yeah. For the landscape design review? Yes. Okay. So lighting details for fixtures on the building. Um, landscape review. 
uh, architectural review. Okay. Incorporate those into the tabling resolution. I can do that. Okay. Somebody want to move to sure. table? I'll move to table and have staff start preparing the uh, approval resolution. A second. Hutsky? Hetsky, aye. Aiken? Aiken, aye. Knauer? Knauer, aye. All right. Anything else? That's all I have for you guys tonight. Thanks, everybody, for coming, and we will adjourn.